Grace and peace to you in the name of our risen Lord, and welcome to online worship this Sunday morning. We are glad to have you with us no matter where you are. We invite you to grab your bulletin if you don't have it already, to settle in, to find yourself here, wherever it is that you are, so that we might worship the triune God together. Our worship this morning begins with the morning prayer. Confession together. 
Join with me in the prayer. The Lord is with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we join the psalmist in giving thanks and praise to you, extolling you, O Lord, for you have drawn us up and did not let our foes rejoice over us. We cried to you for help, and you showed up. But we did not stay in this posture. Instead of singing continual praise to you, we turned toward that which is in front of us. Work, family, technology, advancement, and other mesmerizing trappings of this world. And these led to dead ends and empty promises. So we return to you this day, praying and hoping that you will accept our confession, as you are the God who turns our mourning into dancing, the one who takes off our sackcloth and clothes us with joy. Accept our confession and acknowledge our contrite hearts as we lay our lives before you, seeking mercy and forgiveness. Amen. Chapter 21, 
verses 1 through 19. After this, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he revealed himself in this way. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the beach. Yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you any fish? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in for the quantity of fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his clothes, for he was stripped for work, and sprang into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, but about a hundred yards off. When they got out on land, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish lying on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three of them. And although there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and so with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus was revealed to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you girded yourself and walked where you would. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands, and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish to go. This he said to show by what death he was to glorify God. And after this, he said to him, Follow me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Think 
of your favorite person. Maybe your best friend, the person that you love to spend time with the most. Now, think about what it feels like when you can't spend time with that person. I bet it's not hard to imagine right now. We've all been separated from our friends and some of our families for quite a while. In this story this morning, Simon Peter, one of the disciples, is sad because Jesus is gone, and Simon Peter doesn't know if he'll ever get to spend time with him again. So as our story opens, Simon Peter and many of the disciples are on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, or the Sea of Tiberias. It's getting to be evening, and Simon Peter, who's a fisherman, says to the others that he is going to go out in the boat to go fishing. So the disciples say, we'll all go with you. So they set out in the boat, and they fish all night long, but they don't catch a single fish. As the sun is coming up, they see someone standing on the shore. The man calls out to them and says, did you catch any fish? And they call back, no. The man says, Cast your net to the right of the boat. And they do. And their net fills up with so many fish that they can't even pull it back into the boat. It's too heavy. Isn't that amazing? At that point, one of the disciples, John, recognizes that it's Jesus on the shore. They didn't know if they would see Jesus again after his death. And here he is. John says, it's the Lord. And Simon Peter is so excited that his best friend, his teacher, is back. That, do you know what he does? He was doing his work without any clothes on. So he throws on his clothes and he dives into the water to swim to the shore to greet Jesus. They all end up back at the shore with all of their fish. And as they get there, they can see that Jesus has started a fire. And he's cooking fish and has made bread for them. He's making them breakfast. They are all so happy to see Jesus. Jesus tells them to bring their fish up to the shore. And they count them. And they find that they have 153 kinds of fish. That's a lot of fish. Jesus gives them the invitation, come, have breakfast. And so they do. I bet that was the happiest breakfast they had ever had. Will you pray with me? God, we are thankful for Jesus' story and his love that fill us up. Amen.
Welcome to Breakfast on the Beach. I thought it was appropriate to preach today's sermon, today's homily from behind the communion table, a place and a space that we typically share meals around. Breakfast on the Beach, that must have been the most amazing breakfast in the histories of breakfasts. Right? Throw out brunch, throw out anything else that we've ever experienced. That had to have been one of the most amazing breakfasts ever. Jesus is there. That's the most important part. The, the other piece is that charcoal fire is burning and you can smell it, right? There's something good about charcoal. And you put fish on top of it. Grilled bread. There is very few things that are better than grilled bread. Amen. I know you can say amen from afar. Some of you are getting hungry as I preach this homily. Some of you might be eating breakfast while I'm doing it, enjoying, I pray, fish and bread. What an amazing breakfast. It is so amazing that Peter jumps out of the boat. He has to put clothes on first. Text likes to remind us of that, and then he swims to shore. That is how excited he is to eat this breakfast. Jesus, grilled good local fish, grilled amazing bread. The Lord's Supper, in many ways, is celebrated on that beach. Lydia and I had the opportunity to go to that beach to see that space when we were in the Holy Land last year. Actually, at this very time, we were overseas. It was one of the most peaceful and tranquil parts of our trip. Soft wind was blowing and the breeze was hitting us. We got to walk on the beach and we felt the waves lap along our feet. Tourists seemed to respect this place in a different way. It wasn't overrun, and it was very quiet. We all joke that we wish we had charcoal and fish and bread. It's a beautiful spot to celebrate a breakfast. What happens with most breakfasts, lunches, dinners, brunches? Is that it, there's some point, though, Sometimes it's a sort of repositioning the plate and the cup. It's, it's refusing another refill. It's, it's repositioning the silverware in the napkin. It's a, maybe a rubbing together of the hands in preparation. It's a <clears throat> clearing of the throat. It's something that interrupts the breakfast, the lunch, the dinner, the brunch, the dinner, the whatever we are calling meals this day, and, and it interrupts it, and you realize at that moment, this is more than a meal. This happens to the apostle and disciple Peter. This is more than a breakfast of celebration. This is more than a celebration of the Lord's Supper. This is something more. Do you love me, Peter? Jesus asks him. Of course I do, then tend my sheep. Do you love me, Peter? Of course I do, then feed my sheep. Do you love me, Peter? Of course, Lord, I love you. Do you not hear me? Then tend my lambs, Jesus says. It's more than a breakfast. It's a hard breakfast at this point. But the reality is, this is the consistent Christ that we meet in scriptures. This is the Christ who is part of the Trinity because the triune God is a consistent God throughout. This is the God who begins in grace and love and ends there as well. This is the God who is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, who starts with grace Creation is called good, who ends in revelation with a new city built upon the hill, ends in grace. But there's that middle part. When it becomes more than a meal, that's where Peter finds himself. And in all honesty, that is where we find ourselves. 
This is more than a worship service. Because we're not together. This is more than a meal. Whenever we eat a meal, it's different. This is more than just a season in our lives. So much more. And that's really very challenging to live in and with. We want to go back to the beginning, to the grace part that I just spoke of, or we're happy going to the end where the grace will return. We're happy to go back to things as they were before. Yeah, we weren't great, things weren't perfect, but at least we could worship together in the sanctuary. Yes, our country was divisive and there were challenges that we were facing, but at least we got to be out and about and there was something different than just pandemic news. Let's go ahead and skip to the end if that's where we are going. When is this going to be over? When do we get to be back together in this space, singing and praying and preaching as one? We want to go from the grace of the beginning to the grace of the end. But right now, we are right here. We cannot snap a finger and go one way or the other. We cannot snap a finger and say everything is fine. Open up and all will be well. You just simply cannot do that. Our invitation in this space, in this middle, in this realization that this is more than a breakfast, more than a meal, more than a season, is to realize that this is when Christ calls us. This is where we get to realize that Jesus is truly with us and for us, and that requires a response. Do you love me? Yes, I love you, then tend my sheep. Do you love me? Yes, I love you, then feed my lambs. Do you love me? Yes, then tend my lambs. The call is out there. The challenge is figuring out what that call means to our lives and for our lives. What does it mean to tend to God's lambs, feeding God's lambs, and tending God's sheep? That's a challenge that we are called to figure out. Peter had to do something like that long ago, and our call is not the same as Peter's, but it is from the same God. Maybe our call is to eat breakfast together as a family. Maybe our call is to continue to teach our children until the school is out. Maybe our call is to be safe at home. Maybe our call is to go out and be one of the essential workers. Maybe our call is just to call on other people. Maybe our call is to scream and to be in agony because this is so hard. Maybe our call is realizing that Christ is with us no matter how we end that sentence. Christ is not just at the beginning with grace and at the end with grace, but right here, smack dab in the middle. The call is out there to each of us. We have this invitation to grab it, to claim it, to know that it is going to be more than a call, more than a breakfast, more than a pandemic. It is going to be something that challenges us and forces us to think seriously about what it means that God is with us and for us. It means answering that call in our own particular ways. Thanks be to God for a God who shows up on the beach, who loves us so much that he will make a fire lay out a breakfast. And because he loves us so much, he will make it more than a breakfast. And he will lay a claim upon your life, a claim that requires a response from us. Thanks be to God for that claim. Thanks be to God for that call. Thanks be to God for our Lord.
faith together using the Apostles' Creed. Let us confess the faith of our baptism. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
ourselves, our community, this town, the nation, and the world. The Lord is with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Good and gracious and holy God, we come to you as your people. We come knowing that your grace is that which begins and ends every aspect of our lives. But we find ourselves right in the middle. This is more than a breakfast. This is more than a worship service. This is more than the prayers that we pray normally. But we pray to you, a God who has always shown up in God's people's lives. And for that, we give you thanks. We wonder what's next, and we wonder when that will be. We wonder if it's okay to open, it's okay to go out. We wonder when all of those things will be open. In the midst of all of that wondering, we know that your grace and your love and your hope are with us. Right now, our call is not to simply open up because it feels right. Our call is not to open up because people say it's okay. Our call is not to not be smart. Our call is to listen to you, to pray more fervently during this season. We pray for everyone who has been affected negatively by this coronavirus. Those that have the virus, those that are treating those that have it. Those that have recovered from it and those who have not. Families who are dealing with this, wondering if it's safe to be around each other. We also pray for the members of this community of faith, both near and far, for the ailments and the worries, the anxieties, the joys, that are happening in our lives in the midst of this pandemic. We know that you are a God who shows up in the beginning, the middle, and the end, and for that we give you thanks and praise. Be with us as we lift all of the prayers said both here in this sanctuary but out in the world by your people. May you hear them. May you walk with us as we pray. We are bold to pray such a prayer, but we're bold because you taught us to pray. Your son, Jesus, taught his disciples the Lord's Prayer, who then taught us to pray it. And so we join our voices together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thanks be to God.